we are underneath the A316 viaduct in South London, a 23-span structure built in the 1970s. Over 30 years of heavy commuter traffic have left the bearings of this structure needing to be replaced. You can see one of those hundred or so bearings over my left shoulder. I'm going to tell you now how RMD Quickform worked in an innovative way with customer Fresenay and main contractor Carillion to effect a very efficient replacement of these bearings. Here we are at the business end of these mega props. You can see we've got four 250-ton hydraulic jacks here beneath a, a temporary bearing routed in tight to the soffit here. These, these jacks are loaded up to preload and lift the bridge off its permanent works bearings so that the workers can jet out all of the concrete and take out the old corroded bearings and put the new bearings into place, route them into place with new concrete and then finally take the load out of these hydraulic jacks so that the load from the bridge is transferred straight back onto the existing piers. Pretty exciting stuff. In this area you can see where the workers have jetted out the concrete around the existing bearings. The, the bearings have been removed and they've placed these brand new bearings in position and bolted them up to the underside of the bridge, ready to fill this back up with concrete again so that the new bearing can take the load from the bridge back into this massive pier. The innovative part of this system is how it deals with the horizontal loads that are applied by this huge viaduct that we have above us. As you can see down here, we've got the grout interface with the waffle plate and you can see this grout has been poured in between the prop and the pier here during the erection of the temporary works. And as these huge jacks have compressed the prop elastically when the load has been applied, you can see that the steel prop has shortened by about 8 millimetres and it's actually slid downwards on this grout. But because of, of the profile of this plate here, the prop still can't move horizontally in this direction. And because of these very large bars here, which hold the prop this way, the prop can't move in this direction either. So the prop is completely locked in two directions, but it's free to move up and down sliding on this interface. I talked about those horizontal loads, but from this view you can really see these 20 millimeter diameter rapid tie bars. They're stressed across from one side of the pier to the other, squeezing these props together with a huge load in order to generate the friction force that we need at the pier interface here so that the props can't slide in this direction. My name's Tom Jones, I'm the Presley Project Manager down here on the A316 Country Way Viaduct in Middlesex. Using these uh, props has allowed us to go a different route. Right. Uh, this bridge in particular is not, it's not capable of handling putting jacks on here. Right, so okay. we need something like this in place. Right, right. I guess one of the advantages as well is because you've got so many piers of different heights, because the Megashore comes in short lengths, you can quickly take the equipment out and adapt it to be the right length for the next set of piers, so there's not a lot of downtime and welding of special equipment. Exactly. And with these taller piers, once the equipment is built and in place, it's just a simple case of adding or subtracting a small amount to move it to the next pier. Right. Behind me you can see one of the piers where the bearings have actually been hoisted up into place and fixed into the underside of the bridge. In a minute we're going to go up and see the guys who are actually working to haul these 400 kilogram monsters into position beneath the structure. There you go, you've seen these guys fit this bearing with this epoxy resin grout. Once this concrete plinth has been made good, this new bearing should be capable of supporting this bridge for another 50 years. These are the super slid push pull props that make this application possible for this type of pier. By rotating these props to a known torque, we spring the piers apart in order to apply the load at the interface between the waffle plate and the edge of the pier. And then afterwards, by tensioning the 20mm diameter rapid tie bar, which you can see in front of me, you squeeze the piers back into position again and generate the large friction force that you need between the Megashore and the pier. Here we are at the bottom of the props. 
and I'm going to show you some of the features that make Megaprop unique in its ability to solve customers' problems for this type of application. First of all, at the very base, you can see we've got 90mm Megashore packs. Those enable the prop to be adjusted very easily to change the height for varying prop heights as you go along the viaduct. The difference made up simply in grout at the bottom. But the unique part of this structure, which is completely invisible when the prop is assembled, is the mega prop frames here that you can see that are cut from 20mm thick solid steel plate. It's these frames which are the new and innovative part of this system. When they're bolted in place between the Megashore shafts, they force the entire prop to act structurally in a composite fashion in this direction, so that it can resist buckling over a very long length without any lateral support. These are the two items that make this whole prop work. First of all, the mega prop frame here, which forces the Megashore shafts to act compositely together in their weak axis. But then there's this special head unit with a serrated edge where the grout gets caught between the pier and the, uh, and the steelwork. These babies weigh 600 kilograms and they took an awful lot of engineering to, uh, to get right. This project has been a fantastic example of how RMD Quickform have brought innovative engineering and class leading customer service to enable this project to be completed on time and ahead of budget.